For the third consecutive season, UConn found themselves in the Final Four, but on the outside looking in on the national championship game. For most programs, reaching the Final Four for a 12th consecutive season would be considered a major success. But for the Huskies, anything less than a record 12th national championship is a disappointment. Facing the added task of replacing the program's most prolific scoring tandem of all time in Katie Lou Samuelson and Nafisa Collier, capturing that elusive 12th title will take a true team effort. But with the Hall of Famer Gino Oriema at the helm of one of the nation's most talented teams, it is a season rife with both optimism and opportunity. And we're getting you set for the season ahead on the UConn Women's Basketball Season Preview Show. And it begins right now. UConn Women's Basketball Preview Show presented by Trantolo and Trantolo. Gary Apple sitting alongside Kara Walters back together yeah. again for an eight, se eight seasons. Yes. Kara Walters. Crazy, huh? Good to be back with yes. you. And it's going to be a very different uh, looking UConn team this year. They get it going on Sunday against Cal at Gamble Pavilion in stores. And no Nafisa Collier, no Katie Lou Samuelson. They both graduated. So it's going to be, as I say here, a very different looking Connecticut team. That's 45% of their scoring yes. gone. The highest scoring duo in history, UConn history, gone. But what do you do? You have to turn the page, right? You can't dwell on what's not not there anymore. You have to find a new identity for this team. It's going to look very different. It's going to seem very different, especially, especially early on, but they're going to do some things. They're going to make some changes, and you try to fill that hole. You don't take two players and say, okay, replace Nafisa, replace Katie. It's going to be more by committee this year, Gary. It's Everybody's going to have to contribute. All the, you know you have the core, right? You have Kristen Williams, you have Meg, Megan, you have uh, Crystal Dangerfield leading the helm, but you still have to do everything by committee because no one or two people can put the cape on and save the day. Kind of with Nafisa Kitty said, okay, you do your thing yes. and we'll all surround you. Well, this year's very different. There's not that luxury and everybody has to And so you, you mentioned uh, sort of that core there, those three, yeah. and they're going to be joined by uh, Olivia Nelson, a doe to the big, what a terrific summer playing for Team USA. Yeah. But what about Megan Walker? I think uh, she's somebody to focus on here. Lost 15 pounds over the summer and Gino right. Oriema has really been singing her praises. Well, she did. She put the work in and the effort and, and there were some knocks in her early on we you know as a freshman Gino said she doesn't have the work ethic that sort of thing well she has proved him wrong this summer she's gotten in great shape lost that weight done a lot of agility and footwork drills he needs her to take it to the next level she put the work in she's able to score from the outside from the inside she is the kind of player that needs to do it all because of her size she can rebound and bang on the inside because they don't have any post players really other than Olivia so here's Megan Walker right she plays in the post she plays outside the post um, she her losing weight and getting in shape has been the best thing that could ever happen to her or Gina Oriema all right so you mentioned Olivia Nelson Adota as I did a moment ago she had a up and down freshman year but came on pretty strong at the end of the year and I think there's a lot going to be on her shoulders can she be a dominating player in the post I think that is a huge question to be answered it is I mean everything's a big question mark this year let's be honest Gary but yes Olivia Nelson and Dota she is a key key piece to this puzzle she had there's no choices anymore there's no this there's no choice you have to play well they need you the thing with her is she needs to stay in the game right so she's a great post defender she blocks a lot of shots she helps her teammates out she has to know when she can be aggressive and when she can't because guess what can't be sitting on the bench she can't fall out of a game so she needs to be that high impact blocking shots player but know how to be smart and stay in the game and I think she's looked like she's gotten stronger and she's more confident out there she played USA basketball three on three with Kristen Williams so they have that offensive chemistry got even stronger over the summer but Olivia Nelson Adota she's gotten better I think she's gonna be big for the team but again there's no trying to be better. There's no plan B. This is it. And right. this is her chance to make a big impact on this program. So nobody knows the impact of the loss of players like Nafisa and Katie Lou, quite like the Hall of Fame head coach Gino Oriema. He recently sat down with Maria Marino to dis discuss just how the Huskies are going to cope without those two key players. Take a listen. When you lose two, uh, two players that accounted for so many points, um, I don't know, almost 
4,500, I don't know what it was total, and so many rebounds and so many threes, you know. It's just a lot to fill in. It's the first time in, I think, maybe 15 years or so, I don't know, that we don't have a returning All-American. So it's not like there's a ready-made person to step into one of those roles. So everything's going to be a, a challenge, and we're going to have to work really, really hard to, to do the same things that Lou and Fisa did, but in a different way. Three of those four returning that played a lot of minutes, the starters, Crystal, Megan, Kristen, can you just talk about them and what each of them brings? Crystal's got a big, um, she's got a big job ahead of her. Uh, not only to run our offense, not only to be a leader, score points, but to have to play a lot of minutes and have to be a great communicator. You know, things that she's going to have to step outside her little comfort zone. Um, and she, she's certainly capable of doing that. Um, and Megan, on the other hand, I think what she did last year um, was a big change from sophomore year, I mean, from freshman year, you know? Um, so there's a sense that she's excited about adding to that. So there's a lot that's going to be asked of Megan, and, um, you know, and I'm sure she's excited about being put in that role. Kristen's just a natural scorer. You know, this is what she does. She gets the ball, and she knows this is what I'm good at, and she does it. Um, now we've got to make sure that we can manage some of the rest of her game, but um, it, it's no secret that the three of them plus Olivia have to play great for us all year long, and they have to stay healthy, they have to stay out of foul trouble, you know, all that good stuff in order for us to have the kind of season we think we could have. You talked about this before. Championships here at UConn are expected. Do you think people's perspectives or their expectations have changed about UConn over the last few years with how the landscape has changed? You can't have it both ways that you want to have it. You can't say, we want to win the national championship, and if we don't, we're disappointed, and we think we're not as good as we used to be can't say that and then on the other hand say there's not enough competition in women's basketball you're not going to win it every year if there's more competition because there's much better teams you're not going to win it every year and the competition's gotten better and better every year and as they've gotten better and better every year we're still in the final four every year so what we're doing now is what 360 schools dream about. And in Connecticut, it's a nightmare because we don't win the national championship. We're realistic, you know, we know how, who we've lost. We know who uh, the last couple years, and we don't have anybody left over from the last championship team. Fisa and Lou were the last ones. So let's see what happens. So here we are, the preseason AP poll. It's got uh, the Huskies ranked fifth in the nation by an Oregon and then the defending champions, Baylor, Stanford, and then the Maryland Terrapin. So what about expectations? And we heard Gino say right there, it's, it's a nightmare if UConn doesn't <laughs> win, right? The, the national championship. But what about your overall expectations? Can they get back to the Final Four? Can they cut down the nets in 2020? I, I actually think Gino likes this, okay? There's no pressure on them, right? They're fifth in the nation. This is horrible. This is the worst they've ever been in a long time. Gino thinks it's the worst defensive team he's ever had, blah, blah, blah. No <laughs> expectations, right? So it's exactly where they want to be at this point in the season. It is interesting though nobody on this team has won a national championship so that's very different and they're very hungry I know they're they really want to if you leave UConn without it being a national championship you might as well just pack your bag and go home and this is ridiculous but I think in watching them practice in their first couple of games they're gonna surprise a lot of people okay I still think they're gonna they're run the field in the conference they're gonna do that um, and they have a great non-conference schedule which is exactly what you want to set up as a coach Gino Oriema has done it I mean they still have a Hall of Fame coacher coach they play at a UConn style of level of working their butts off hu hustling for every loose ball and they play a great non-conference schedule so they're going to be okay everybody uh, but I think they're gonna surprise a lot of people it's just gonna take it's gonna look different
season is going to take longer. I don't think you'll see really until January what they're really capable of doing down the line. They need to lose a few non-conference games against really good teams. And like Gino said, you want the parity better in women's basketball? Well, here you have it. Yep. And now we got to fight through this. And uh, listen. I think they're going to be better than a lot of people think. So what you're saying is the sky is not falling, number no, one. No. And, and you know what? Gino also said he thinks they're going to be really, really, really good after the first of the year. Yeah. That it will be a work in progress. So Karen and I just getting going here on the UConn Women's Basketball Season Preview Show. Katie Lou and Nafisa may be gone, but Crystal Dangerfield still in stores and going to discuss the importance of her leadership when we come back in a moment. Plus, Gino had his work cut out for him retooling the roster for this season. So how will the newcomers impact this year's team and beyond? It's all coming up when we come back from New York City in just a moment. The Yukon Season Preview Show is brought to you by Trantolo & Trantolo, Connecticut's personal injury law firm. She's heating up. That's a good sign for Crystal Dangerfield. Crystal weaving through traffic and finding Irwin. Another assist for Dangerfield. Dangerfield for three. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Dangerfield to Samuelson. Dangerfield read it beautifully, stepped in for the steal, and takes it the other way for two more. We get a look, Crystal Dangerfield's growth over the years, presented by Trantolo and Trantolo. And as you can see, she has just gotten better and better every single season. And here, right now, the senior point guard on the possibility of capturing that elusive 12th national championship. That's tough. And it's something that we're still trying to figure out. But um, first and foremost, it's definitely going to be listening to what the coaches say. Because um, he pointed out the other day, nobody here on this team has won a championship last year. The other two, they had won it. Um, but of course, they had the help of um, Stewie and all those guys. But this year, it's, it's a clean slate for everybody. Like Nobody's won one. So they're the only, only people on our team that know what it's like to win a championship. So we're going to have to follow their lead. So Crystal is the, the senior point guard, and she doesn't want to leave school without a national championship. So a lot of pressure, right? How yeah. do you how do you diffuse that pressure and use it in a positive way? Well, this is it, right? This is Crystal's yes. time in her career, and I know that she's a competitor, and and with pride, she wants to leave this university making an impact. Not that she wouldn't if she didn't win a national championship, but she wants to do that. But there's no one to look to the left or to the right. This is it, Crystal. She is the one with the most experience. She is the point guard. She is the extension of. Of Gino on the court she has to run this show it's it's not natural for her to be the vocal leader she has to come out of her shell this year and be that person grab people by the shirt get them in the huddle say things to them because this is it she has one shot at this we see what she does on the court we see that she kind of leads by tempo makes passes gets spots gets this people in spots get them gets them the ball but can she be that vocal leader that grabs someone and says let's get our act together let's run this so that should be interesting but also as a competitor i think she will find it to go outside of herself and do that. i was going to ask you if, if it's not in your nature yeah. right to step into that role is not always very easy yeah. so does does being a senior help in that in that area I think being a senior and being as competitive as Crystal Dangerfield is, is going to just make her come out of her shell and be that person. Because there's no, you know, in the past, you could defer to someone. You could look at someone else, and she can't. She has to lead this team and, and help. And the thing is, it's going to be by committee, but Crystal has to be the start of everybody contributing and being consistent. There can't just be flashes of brilliance. There has to be great consistency. Still to come here on our season preview show over the next few years, going to see a lot of the fresh this year, Aubrey Griffin and Anna Makarat, but how much of an impact will they make this upcoming season? Go to explore that on the other side of a short break. The Huskies' new look roster took somewhat of a blow this week as the incoming Tennessee transfer, Avina Westbrook, had her waiver for immediate eligibility denied by the NCAA. But there is still some hope as UConn has filed an appeal with the D1 Committee for Legislative Relief who can overturn 
the decision. For more on the composition of UConn's roster this season, go to send things over to Meg Colmo. She's joined by the newest member of our SNY broadcast family, Alan Bestwick. Alan's going to be joining us all season long as the play-by-play -play voice for our women's team broadcast. We're excited to have Alan on board uh, for this upcoming season. Guys, take it away. Gary, thanks. Well, Megan, can you remember a UConn team that we've known as little about as the one we're about to start watching? No, I mean, there really are so many unknowns going into this season, but let's think about, okay, what do we know? We know Crystal Dangerfield, a terrific point guard, poised to lead this team in her senior year. And then you look at everybody else. Okay, Kristen Williams and Megan Walker, they've had some solid minutes. Okay, they've got to come in and produce a lot more. Olivia Nelson Adota, same thing, coming off a of freshman year where she was almost like a baby deer. Okay, come out now, grow. The three of them worked really hard in the off season. I think that's going to help tremendously, but after that, we don't know a lot. Well, the one thing we do know, this team will be a lot better in February and March than maybe it will be in November and December. Yes, and we were talking to Gino Oriema earlier, and as is his style, <laughs> he has a tendency to focus on some of the problems perhaps they have and what they are not. I, I think this is where he's at his best. He is so good at teaching and getting out of them what he knows is in there. They may not even know is there yet. So the freshmen, they're gonna, there are some freshmen who are gonna play a lot of minutes this year, but as we've seen in the past, you may be really heralded coming out of, of high school, but when you get here, it's different and it's hard and it's the hardest thing these kids have ever done. But I trust this coaching staff, they will get these kids prepared, but it will be very, very different looking from what we've seen in recent years. So for this team to make the final four again, what player has to make the biggest leap forward? Well, it's interesting because they've had one exhibition game, right? And already the press yeah. was asking Gino <laughs> a Final Four, and he's yeah. like, seriously, we had one exhibition game. We got one senior that plays a lot, but that's the expectations. They've made 12 straight. I mean, that's, that's what they've done. It's a blessing and a curse. But I, I think right now the most pivotal player for this team, pardon the pun, in the pivot is Olivia Nelson Adota. She has to come in, make her impact felt, and, and score in the lane, be a defensive presence, block shots. I, I think they're going to need her to have a really solid year. It'll be interesting to follow Liv's progress, how the freshmen fare, and just where this team does end up in March versus where they start off this coming Sunday. Gary? All right, Alan, we thank you. Welcome to the team, and Meg, great to see you as well. So a whole host of newcomers yeah. to talk about as well with this team. The freshman, Aubrey Griffin, Ada Makarat is a freshman. Uh, transfer, Evelyn Adebayo, she comes from Murray State, she's the grad transfer, and then potentially Avina Westbrook if she is cleared to play. So this is an interesting group. What do yeah. you expect from them? A lot. <laughs> yeah. Gino, they don't, they don't have that luxury of taking their time to acclimate to the big time, do they? Uh, Anna comes from the professional um, game in Poland, so I think she has a little more, her, her nerves are, are eased a little more than, you know, Audrey, you have her coming in, and she is definitely, she's the fre she was the lone freshman, right, before Gino went out and found all these other players. She was it. And I think now she's an athletic player. I mean, watching her play, now Gino says... She is even more athletic than Gabby Williams. Now, I don't know if that's true. What I've seen of her has been pretty darn impressive, but one of the most athletic uh, players that he's had at UConn. And Anna's that typical uh, foreigner. She shoots well from outside. Now, in the first two exhibition games, she struggled shooting, but she's a really good shooter, and she drives to the basket and penetrates real well. UConn's going to need points anywhere they can get them, Gary, right? right? So if you have this great player who's strong, she's a lot stronger than I thought she was. Uh, if you have this great player driving to the basket, getting to the free throw line, then they have to make their free throws, um, getting points any way you can on the board. I think they have those two are going to be the people that contribute the most coming in early. Yeah, I think Anna's one of the X factors here because yeah. as you say, she is 
really big and strong. Yeah. She, she can be a factor if she uh, can bang, get rebounds, and provide that upfront muscle that they so desperately need. And also, when you think about Avina Westbrook, and this is going to be very, uh, Gina was not happy when the NCAA ruled that she was not going to be eligible this year. We'll see if it's overturned. But she, she had off-season knee surgery, I know. So she could need some time as well if she, by any chance, is named as somebody who could be eligible this year. Yeah, she's coming back from knee surgery, so she needs a little bit of time, but I don't think she needs all season, NCA. Wake right. up, let her come on the team. I think if your coach gets fired, you should be able to play right away, and that would add a whole different dimension to this UConn team, but people coming in have to help early and often. More to come here on our preview show presented by Trantolo and Trantolo. Does this team have what it takes for a 13th consecutive Final Four appearance? Kara is going to weigh in when we come back in just a moment. The Yukon Season Preview Show is brought to you by Trantolo and Trantolo, Connecticut's personal injury law firm. Yukon men's season set tip off this weekend as well. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, 6.30, the men's season preview show. It precedes the season opener against Sacred Heart right here on SNY. And then the women go to tip it off. Their season begins Sunday at 1 o'clock against Cal. You can also catch that game right here on SNY, which is the official home of the Yukon Huskies. A couple of things to hit on before we get out of here, Karen. Number one, you spoke about it earlier, the, the schedule this year. Out of conference schedule, really tough. Tennessee's back on the schedule. South Carolina, Notre Dame, Baylor, Oregon. Just five of the really tough non-conference games they're going to play. But that's good, right? I mean, this is what you want to do. They're playing the other three teams from the Final Four last right. season. Yeah. I mean, that's what you want to do, especially if you're Gino Oriema. You play, you play teams like that that's only going to help you become better. He's not afraid of losing. We, we've seen it. He's not afraid of booking these games because he knows that her, their team down the stretch is really what's going to matter in March and April. Final Four this year down among... The Bayou. The Bayou. The Big Easy mm -hmm. down in New Orleans. What's, what, what, what are the chances oh, here that oh. they're going to they're gonna be there? I know we have You're asking for a prediction right this second. Why not? Okay, well, if we're going to do what? a preview show, go on the record. <laughs> There's a lot of question marks, okay? Yeah. Ask me that in January. But I'm not counting this team out like everyone else is. I'm going to go out on a limb and predict... They're going back to the final four. I like that. Gino, Gino would get in my face and be like, are you crazy? <laughs> this is the worst team I've ever had. I'm going to say it, Gino, going back to the final four this year. Well, I'm just saying, let's see. Let's I see. like it. All right. Be bold, Kara Walters. Great to be back together <laughs> you with too. you. I'm you looking too. forward to another season together, and that's going to do it for us for the, the Hall of Famer. I can say that, yes. right? Because you are a Hall yes. of Famer. For Kara Walters, I'm Gary Apple. We say so long from New York City. We thank you for joining us. So long.